and a very intriguing 2-0 and against 2-0 and with the Dolphins off that dramatic comeback. They are now home with the Buffalo Bills, who absolutely dump-trucked the Tennessee Titans on Monday night. Short week for them. They're 2-0. and They now go to Miami, where they've been very good in the recent series against the Dolphins. They are laying six. Hello at Miami in this matchup. Total is 52 for this showdown. Chris Farley, we are back to you uh, here for an official play. Uh, tell me what you think and why. Yeah, so about those Dolphins, uh, that comeback in the fourth quarter was about as crazy as you'll see in the NFL. But I must say, I don't think that it was necessarily fluky. Um, I mean, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are going to be matchup problems for probably every single defense in the NFL. And that really showed out in the second half. Uh, you know, Ravens secondary is better than that. But Dolphins going back home, you know, and now they're big dogs here. Uh, but this is this is a tricky game for the Bills. You know, the Bills have not really faced adversity yet. The Rams were kind of lifeless in week one. You know, the Titans, turns out, Titans probably aren't a very good team this year. Uh, at least they're not the same version of the Titans that we saw. So the Bills trucked them in week two. Now the Bills got to go to South Florida. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. I got to say, one thing I was wrong about is I thought this Dolphins offense was going to take a little bit longer to come together. That second half was a statement. You know, Mike McDaniels, first year as a head coach, making those adjustments, still trusting Tua, trusting his offense, a really well-coached game at the end of that too, which I think maybe you know, not a lot of people are, are, are talking about that, right? Yeah, it's all Tua, it's all Hill. But Mike McDaniels has poise. In his first two weeks, he beat Bill Belichick and John Harbaugh. That's, that's pretty impressive. Now he has Sean McDermott coming to town. But my play on this is going to be the over. I mean, there is zero evidence to suggest that anybody can stop the Buffalo Bills offense so far. That's an absolute juggernaut is what it looks like. You know, Josh Allen is going to create offense uh, week after week. You know, Eventually, they'll have a dud, but I don't think it comes this week against the Dolphins. They beat them 35 nothing in the situation last year. Uh, and you know, the Dolphins, I think they're going to score points, and the Dolphins are probably going to be playing from behind again. So, listen, this is a Dolphins team who they can create offense out of nowhere. I don't know why this line went down. It was, it was at 54. Now it's at 52. I'm not going to get scared away from the line movement. I think there's a lot of points in this one again. Even though it's a divisional game, I think this one goes over. It's kind of interesting because Marino used to own Buffalo and the whole AFC East. And then Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, Cornelius Bennett, they owned the Dolphins for a while. Then it's kind of swung back and forth between the two. But recently now, Buffalo's been in command. They are hyped in South Florida. I'm doing this show in Florida, in West Central Florida, and I know a lot of Dolphin fans, they're chirping. They haven't been chirping in a little while. They're chirping right now. We'll see what they have for Buffalo. Scott, any quick thought, if no official play? Uh, just a couple of things. I do have to show some value on uh, uh, Miami in this game and make the line probably three and a half to four points. So I think we got a little value there. Um, let's remember it kind of just to support some stuff that Chris said. Um, Micah Hyde, very good chance he doesn't play. Jackson, the cornerback, I think there's a very good chance he doesn't play. Ed Oliver missed last week, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Gabriel Davis uh, hopefully comes back just to add from an offensive standpoint. Um, and Buffalo's had a lot of luck down here since Allen became the full-time starter, 35, 31, and 37 points down there. Buffalo has been very good at protecting the quarterback this year. Miami is getting no pressure on the quarterback. So Josh Allen does figure to have some time here. Uh, and, you know, on the other side, um, Tua's got a perfect head coach. That's a very uh, quarterback-friendly system. And like Chris said, you know, it's maybe showing up even sooner than we thought. Uh, but he's in a good position to succeed. He can't succeed in this one. He's not going to succeed. They got the right receivers. Uh, I made the total about where the number is, so I don't have a play on that. But I think Buffalo will get their points, and especially if they're missing some of those key de defensive players. Remember, Jordavius White's already out, so they're down another corner there. They could be missing three of their top four starters in the secondary for this game, and that could be trouble and allow Miami to score some points as well. So I got no problem with that pick, and I can see that definitely happening. Put your track shoes on and be ready to run with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Good luck if you're Buffalo in that one. So the official play does belong to Chris Farley. He's on the over for Buffalo and Miami. Points, points, points in South Florida in an early game coming 
on Sunday. We remind you that we're live one Eastern time on Thursdays. No matter when you're seeing the show, either in clip form or long form, you see it right there on the screen. Thursdays at one, we're live. You can get in the live chat as we're going along, make some comments. We see some of you commenting right now in the games on what the handicappers have or not. Keep that up. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button down below, spread the word, share us out as well. 